the first time I met Tom Frasad, he walked into the offices of Punk Magazine, passed our secretary, pushed his way through, sat down next to me, put his feet on the desk in front of me so I couldn't get any work done, got my attention, looked me in the eye and said, I'm going to make you rich and famous. When the whole um, punk rock thing started, Tom was really on top of that. Absolutely. More than anybody else in the media, for sure. And uh, he got a lot of uh, flack from people at High Times. People at High Times really didn't like it. They didn't want, you know, they were thinking he was a sellout then. Um, just because he recognized the next new trend. I mean, that's what he always did. You know Malcolm Gladwell's book right now, The Outliers, his most recent book? Oh, it's great. Tom was an outlier. I mean, it's all about people who were very successful because they were, you know, they have mastery of a certain thing, which he had uh, in publishing and in, you know, taking the pulse of the culture and um, knowing what was coming around the bend and just genuinely being into it, not in a mercenary way, but also, he had a real knack for being able to make it, make it a business, make things a business. So, yeah, I remember when he put Tom, Johnny Rotten on the cover of High Times, and he really, you know, people think he was acting crazy in the office. I think he was just really furious at the people who were giving him a hard time. It was his magazine, anyway. I first met Tom Fassad in uh, 1977 and uh, at High Times office, and I. I told him to put uh, Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols on the cover of the magazine. If he did, the magazine would sell out. He did, it did, and I was hooked. Tom was an instant person. You don't get many people who make decisions that quickly and actually carry them out. My own involvement in punk was with my uh, group, Blind Orange Julius. We were the very first band to play CBGBs. We were on a double bill with some idiots from Bronx or Queens. They had a stupid name. Uh, it was the Ramones or something like that. So uh, we got into a fight with them because they uh, they had some equipment on stage and we just plugged in and started to play. I mean, Hilly, you know, needed somebody to bring some business into his bar and we were happy to do it. So we're playing. It was me and Dean and uh, Ted Mann and a bunch of people and we were all having a good time. Dean Latimer was in playing? Yeah. He what was, was he playing? Uh, he sang. He sang a, a brilliant song called California Sunshine Girl, which one day uh, Ted Mann and I are determined to uh, resurrect and make a number one hit. So we're there playing, and, and you know, this tall guy with fucking long hair, I don't know, it was Joey or, or, or Tommy Ramon, because it, it starts, you know, messing with us. So Aaron was there, so I, I told Aaron, go around the corner, here's five bucks, go get a pie. And he comes back with the pie and hits uh, Joey or Tommy and a big fight broke up, broke out and, and that was the end of our gig at uh, CBGB's. Um, I thought Tom's um, uh, interest in the punk movement was really uh, right on, it was great. That's the, that was the direction to go. But I think that the magazine lacked, um, wanted his attention, they wanted his focus. It needed Tom to be there and to, and he, he didn't want to be an editor, he didn't want to be a publisher, he didn't want to be a business guy, he wanted to go out and, and be part of what was happening culturally, politically. That's who he was. We had Debbie Harry on the cover, we had uh, Sid Vicious on the cover. Uh, the first national magazines to, to do that and to, to say that this was important to talk about it um, from a ground uh, level perspective rather than you know, a Time magazine or Newsweek talking about some curious phenomena. We were uh, part of that. And I think Tom was, uh, if, if nothing else, the original punk. I mean, he was always a contrarian. He, always, he was never afraid of, of a fight. He was always ready to, you know, throw a punch, uh, which I loved about him. And, uh, you know, he liked to mix it up. Tom Frasad did not like hippie music. If you look at the first five years of covers of High Times, you won't find the Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, Rush, Yes, or any of the popular progressive rock or hippie rock groups of that time. But he put Debbie Harry on the cover. He put Johnny Rotten on the cover more than once. 
He did large feature stories on punk rock. Uh, once upon a time, I uh, during the tour, I, I had just spent the evening with Sid Vicious, and I said to Tom, man, that guy's the most self-destructive person I've ever met in my life. And he said, no, he's not. I am. we were cops. Warner Brothers poisoned uh, Sex Pistols against Tom. The most unforgettable thing about Tom is the rumor that Tom kidnapped Sid Vicious and tried to kidnap the Sex Pistols away from Warner Brothers. That's why we went on tour with the Sex Pistols. Tom wasn't interested in just making a movie about the Sex Pistols. Tom wanted to be their manager and he wanted to free them from the corporate control of Warner Brothers, his sworn enemy. And um, I think, you know, people at the magazine were right to be upset about it, not because they didn't like the punk movement, but because fucking Tom just wasn't paying attention. Who's going to uh, sign the checks? And every time he came back to the office, he was a pain in the ass. When Larry, when Larry Flint was shot in that attempted assassination, it caused a great deal of trouble for High Times, and it began the real problems for Tom. Everything had been smooth sailing for High Times up until that point. But once Larry Flint was in the hospital, there was no one around to run his company, and payments from Flint distribution were late to High Times, and the real money problems began. And that's when the people charged with managing high times started to cause problems for Tom. Tom wanted to take the money the magazine was making and make a movie about the Sex Pistols. And the people who ran the magazine tried per to prevent Tom from doing what he wanted to do. So when we got off tour with the Sex Pistols, Tom summoned all of the people who caused his, him problems with his movie brought them into a room while he sat on a throne and ordered the villains to approach him he summarily had them fired ceremony, in a grand ceremony with the entire magazine staff in attendance each employee was given a copy of Mao's little red book a red star and a ticket for a bus trip to the Diplomat Hotel where the ceremony was held. Tom was very theatrical. He understood the importance of street theater. So you never knew when Tom was putting you on, when he was acting, when he was depressed, when he was pretending to be depressed. He was like Andy Kaufman in his own way. <laughs> 